This is a perfect quote for wealth planning. Start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. These are the inspirational words coined by Arthur Ashe, world number one tennis great throughout late 60s and mid 70s. Let's see how this applies towards the journey to your financial summit. We are Wealth First, a boutique financial services group with head offices in Sydney. We help everyday families in a number of areas including wealth creation, tax minimization, mortgage reduction and retirement planning. Today we are going to discuss a number of topics including the history of the pension and how long it is a looming crisis that will soon disappoint many people. We're also going to elaborate on some key government incentives and initiatives that could help you build assets to help you retire earlier without relying on a pension that may or may not be there for you. Our story begins on July 1st, 1909. This is when the age pension was first introduced to Australia. At that time, men were eligible to receive a modest £1 per fortnight from age 65 and women were eligible from age 60. Due to then lax occupational health and safety standards and killer diseases of the day, and of course other factors, the average life expectancy was only 55 for men and 59 for women. It was a welfare model that worked because only 4% of the population was over 65. If the age pension were reintroduced today using the exact same formula, men would be eligible at 93 and women 89. So, let's talk about today. According to the Institute of Actuaries, today 89% of people will make it to age 65 and beyond. Sadly, many have ended up at a place where they had not planned nor expected. Currently, 76% of all people who make it to be 65 and over are partially or totally dependent on a pension to survive and 12% still need to keep working often because they still have debts to service. Whilst this might be disappointing for them, it is also a real burden on our community. This rapidly growing number of welfare recipients is taking a real toll on the shrinking numbers of people in the workforce paying taxes to fund it. Our policymakers foresaw this and in 1992 introduced the superannuation guarantee with the goal to have people retire on their superannuation savings and not the pension. But there is a problem. Many people approaching or entering retirement age are carrying out extensive renovations, buying new cars and going on a world cruise and are basically spending all of their super savings, making all these people eligible to hold their hand out for a pension, creating a ticking time bomb. This is not just a problem confined to Australia. There is a tabloid headline from the UK, Millions Must Work Forever, Retirement Not Possible Due to Pension Crisis. That pension reform is imminent is unquestionable. But to what extent? What are the policymakers going to do? On a light note, I saw this funny cartoon. Two lines, jobs and pensions. The lady crying out, Wrong cue, Mr Grimley, this is for pensions. You're only 83. Hey, what if this was a preview of what's coming? Then it's not so funny, is it? Some of the obvious options include increasing the age pension to beyond 70 years of age. Is 83 really out of the question? To make lump sum access not available, so no renovations or holidays, to maybe have people self-fund for many or all of their retirement years. Here's an article that was recently in the Sydney newspaper. Housing the bedrock of retirement. If we zoom in, Skyrocketing property prices have boosted the wealth of homeowners and there is an increase in pressure on the government from think tanks to consider reducing age pension payments to those that own their own home. Does this mean that we will have to use our equity to self-fund our retirement or even repay any pension received from our estate? OK, so what are our options? Well, let's go to the experts and have a look. This is from ASIC's website. 
and they have drawn information from the Australian Superfunds Association and what they say is for a couple to live comfortably in their twilight years would need $58,444 a year. I'm not sure how they've worked these numbers out, but the ASFA website offers a detailed budget breakdown. There was no provision whatsoever for servicing any debts. There is no provision for rent, so they assume you are totally debt-free living in your own home. There is no provision for income tax, so that $58,444 needs to be tax-free. Some of the personal items were interesting. Ladies, your budget is $3.07 for cosmetics and personal care per week. You have $10.30 for home improvements per week. So on your 80th birthday, you can recarpet. And homeowners, your budget is $18.03 per week for all your repairs and maintenance. Oh, and you need to budget under $4.75 per meal. Okay, so let's use this figure of $58,444 and let's see how much we would need above and beyond our debt-free home. Let's reverse calculate to see how much we would need. If we were able to achieve 5% tax-free, we will need $1,169,000. Now we want to share some ideas here and need to make it very clear that this is not advice. This is general information only. Please seek advice from licensed professionals, like Wealth First, before taking any action. When we work with our clients, one of the first things we talk about is debt. Good debt and bad debt. Bad debt are those debts that we need to service after we pay tax. So if we need, say, $2,000 per month to service our home loan and credit cards, we must firstly earn $4,000 pay tax to end up with $2,000. So how can we convert bad into good debt? Many of us have had a great growth in the value of our homes and have equity available to draw from and invest. With the right investment, this would be good debt. When considering investment options, a popular option is to buy an investment property. An investment property attracts rental income and if it's the right property, depreciations. And with the right financial structure, it will also create significant tax deductions to help with affordability. I'm going to make a claim here and say that is in many instances. The right investment property can often cost close to or even zero out of pocket to its owner. This means that it's fully paid for by the tenant and the tax office. We can also structure the investment in such a way that the tax office pays its contribution to you every payday to help with your day-to-day -day cash flow. We now look at converting bad debt into good debt through a process called debt recycling, which we will explain in more detail through our live simulator. Wait until you see the massive impact that this can have on your own home loan. So here we have a situation where we have an investment property that is completely self-funded through the tenant and tax office. This is a growing asset outside of your super. We find that many people want to explore managing their own superannuation. Under the right circumstances, it is possible to use super to gear into another investment property where the tenant and the superannuation guarantee fully funds this property. You would not be a pioneer to consider this option. Date from the Australian Taxation Office showed that there were 534,176 SMSFs as at June 2014 with over 1.01 million members. It represents the fastest growing segment of Australia's $1.8 trillion retirement savings sector. Think about this. This strategy could culminate in you owning at least two properties, which will pay you tax-free rent for the rest of your life and also provide you total peace of mind knowing that you have many financial options for accessing extra income and even lump sums of money without ever touching your primary home. Hopefully we have given enough information to provoke some thinking. Let's get together and see how these or other strategies could work for you. Our first meeting is to see where you are at now and where you are currently headed. And as you can see by this image, it's not always pretty. 
We then take away this information and assess it. Our group is a multifaceted financial planning, credit, tax, property, accounting and law. We now prepare a detailed personalised financial proposal, which we present to you, preferably in our Sydney offices where you can meet the team. We will seek to establish our credibility through displaying to you our various licences, memberships, dispute resolution schemes, professional insurances and regulatory compliance, all of which demand much scrutiny and due diligence by our regulators, insurers and associations prior to being issued and require continuous audits and checks to be maintained. This will provide you total protection and peace of mind. Our extended team is cutting edge and have been honoured with many awards in many key categories, further comforting you that you are in good hands. If appropriate, let's all work together in implementing the necessary steps in the journey towards your financial summit, starting where you are, using what you have, and doing what you can.